brown.com. Well, the real president and his administration are always quick to dismiss any criticism that comes from this network. But as we showed you at the top of the show, the heat has been coming in from all sides. Even one of the president's biggest fans in the media, Chris Matthews, is questioning his leadership. What part of the presidency does Obama like? He doesn't like dealing with other politicians. That means his own cabinet. That means uh, the members of the Congress, either party. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mm -hmm. particularly like the press. What part of it does he? He likes to write the speeches. He likes to rewrite what Fabro and the others wrote for the first drafts. But what part does he really like? He likes going on the road, campaigning, visiting businesses like he does every couple of days somewhere in Ohio or somewhere. What part does he like? Because he I doesn't think... like lobbying for the bills he cares about. He doesn't no. like selling to the press the way most people do to get their stories out there. Mm -hmm. uh, does he like actually giving orders or giving somebody the power to give orders? No, he doesn't seem to like to be an executive. Wow. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of the uh, great blues song by B.B. King, The Thrill is Gone. Well, joining us now is editor of AboveTheLaw.com, Ellie Mistel, and communications director for California Congressman Dana Robacher, Tara Setmeyer. Great to have both of you guys here. Thank you. All right, Tara, um, the person in charge of the IRS division that was targeting all these conservative groups is now going to go over and handle the health care part of Obamacare with the IRS? How concerned should Americans be? They should be very concerned. They should have been concerned when Obamacare was getting rammed through Congress in the first place. The people are finally paying attention and realizing, wait a minute, I'm paying how much in taxes? It's going to cost us how much? These people at the IRS who are like stormtroopers, every one of them, IRS is the most feared agency in the world, next yeah. to maybe the KGB. And, you know, people say, wait, these are the people that are going to be tasked with enforcing making sure everyone has health insurance, it is a disaster. This woman, she got $103,000 in bonuses, taxpayer-funded money. She was basically promoted, and she oversaw this targeting of conservative groups, religious groups, and things like that, and she's getting basically a promotion. You're telling me that no one knows what's going on here? Ellie, uh, Stephen Miller, appearing before the Ways and Means Committee, actually sat there with a straight face and said that the reason this happened was that they were just trying to be so efficient. <laughs> Look, serious. First of all, what's the promotion point? Though, let's not forget Stephen Miller was fired. He's gone. Now I understand. Obama did not. Ob Obama did not take him out into the middle of Times Square and flog him like perhaps a lot of people would want. But he is in fact gone. What Miller was trying to say, and I think this is a fair point, right? When you apply for tax exempt status, does that make you immediately above the law? Can we not ask a question as to whether or not your app application is correct? I think that that's what they were trying to do. Did they do it correctly? No. Was it, did they, did they, were they perhaps a bit overzealous? Sure. But, so do, but it's a legitimate question, right? But, but do we as taxpayers and those of us who are targeted for the IRS, do we get to, that, to have that a convenient uh, excuse? Oh, sorry, I didn't know. No, you end up in Look, jail. They take your business. They take I don't think this should be. I don't think this should be. I don't, think this should be, I don't think this should be in the purview of the IRS. I think this should be in the purview of Congress. If Congress, if the do-nothing Congress had acted and given us better guidelines as to what constitutes it's a charitable Congress. organization or not, we wouldn't be in this. Okay, but Ellie, let me ask you this. Oh, come on. Here, here's the question. The, the problem is not that they went through the forms and were diligent. They were only diligent with one side. They That's didn't right. apply that diligence to left-wing groups. That <laughs> equal protection, 14th Amendment. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a case by case basis. I think there are a lot of progressive groups in Texas right now who are saying, "Wait a minute, I didn't know it was illegal for the IRS to ask me a lot of questions." Really? I think the point is is that look, the point is that this has gotten very partisan in terms of what constitutes charitable organizations and what constitutes a political organization. We live in a culture, right, where one of the most charitable things you can do, like which I would say like giving coupons to hungry people, that's been politicized. Food stamps have been politicized. So if we can't even agree on whether or not food stamps are charity. Certainly, I think it's okay to say that the IRS should not be in the business of making these determinations. Congress okay. should be. Okay, so we can have a different discussion about whether the tax code should be what it is, but this is what it is. And I would, allow, I would like someone to come out and say what Muslim groups were targeted this way. Were there any Muslim groups asked what prayers that they pray? No. What, what progressive organizations like ACORN and all of these social justice organizations, were they asked what prayers they pray? Who's on their donor list? No, they weren't. And when that, and that that's the issue here. Don't deflect away and blame the frickin' tax code for what these people are doing, targeting 
It's an enemy. I generally don't think that two wrongs generally don't make a right. So no. saying like, oh, let's go after Muslims now to even the I score didn't say that. doesn't I make said, a lot of sense. I, no, I, that's not what I said. I said, can we name that happening? No, it didn't. The point that the governor made was this was a one-sided, clearly targeted thing for people who didn't agree with this administration. The ones that didn't agree on the administration's policy with Israel, the ones that were by, Tea Party folks questioning this government's overreach. By people they were who have targeted. been held accountable for that. No, you are using like, are you interested, the guy are you interested in, his term look, is going to end you, one week later. Are you it's interested a convenient in, resignation. Are you interested in signing blame? Are you interested in signing blame? Or are you interested in fixing the problem? If you're interested in fixing the problem, then the focus needs to be on Congress. If you're interested in signing blame, like I said, Obama can take people to Times Please Square and do what you want with blame. them. It's not blame, it's accountability. Not either or. That's what liberals always do. It's either or. No, it's accountability. The government is supposed to be accountable to the people. And in this instance, they need to be accountable. We, Congress can try and fix the tax law. We've been trying to do that forever. How about a fair tax? So you only need one. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm for that. I'm for a fair tax. You can have the discussion. And by the way, both of you, I'm going to say thanks for being here. But, you know, the great thing you just brought up, the fair tax, here's why that would be wonderful. Not only does it transform the economy, but I think even more importantly, it gets rid of the IRS. You don't have these bureaucrats deciding on what's right and what's wrong. And uh, obviously, we've got to have both of you guys back because this is kind of fun. I think we'll, we'll sell tickets. We'll have popcorn. This will be wonderful. Ellie, always a pleasure to have you. And uh, Tara, you. great to have you with us tonight. And thank, thank you. you for joining us. I assure you, there's much more to be talked about as to whether the IRS can burst into your home and ask you, in fact, a man to find out what you prayed last night. You better say your prayers. We'll be saying ours. Until next week, from New York, this is Mike Huckabee. Good night. God bless.